In his essay on Baudelaire, T.S. Eliot delves into the challenges of understanding and appreciating the French poet's work, particularly in England, where his reception has been slow, and even in France, where he is not fully comprehended. Eliot argues that Baudelaire's enigmatic nature stems from his simultaneous embrace of both the positive and negative aspects of his era, making it difficult to assess his true value. One obstacle to understanding Baudelaire's legacy is the profound influence he exerted on subsequent generations of poets, both in France and abroad. In England, he was initially championed by Swinburne and later by Swinburne's adherents, contributing to widespread enthusiasm for his work. However, this popularity also led Baudelaire being pigeonholed within a literary trend that he helped shape, making it challenging to discern the enduring qualities of his poetry from passing fashions. Eliot suggests that Baudelaire's prose writings hold significance in shedding light on his poetic oeuvre, particularly through the lens of one of his translated works. By exploring Baudelaire beyond his renowned collection Les Fleurs du Mal, readers may gain fresh insights into his overall body of work. Baudelaire emerged during an era characterized by the belief in art for art's sake, which further complicates efforts to evaluate his literary contributions. Despite being perceived as an artist solely preoccupied with aesthetics, Baudelaire's meticulous craftsmanship and singular focus on his poetic output set him apart from many of his contemporaries. However, this narrow characterization fails to capture the breadth of his intellect and complexities of his artistic vision. Eliot suggests that Baudelaire's significance may transcend conventional assessments, positioning him as a pivotal figure who anticipated key aesthetic and moral issues that continue to resonate in modern poetry. Eliot also challenges comparisons between Baudelaire and other literary figures such as Dante and Goethe. While some liken Baudelaire to a fragmented version of Dante, Eliot argues that such comparisons overlook the distinctive qualities of Baudelaire's portrayal of hell. Instead, Eliot proposes viewing Baudelaire as a later incarnation of Goethe, representing a similar awareness of his era's cultural and intellectual currents. Eliot contends that understanding Baudelaire requires grappling with the complexities of his era and recognizing his prescient insights into the aesthetic and moral dilemmas of modernity. Despite their apparent differences, both Baudelaire and Goethe emerge as astute observers of their times, offering valuable perspectives on the human condition and the evolving nature of artistic expression. Eliot explores the complexity and significance of the French poet's prose works, arguing that they are as substantial as those of Goethe. Eliot emphasizes the importance of Baudelaire's prose writings not only in the enhancing of our understanding of his renowned poetry collection, Le Fleur du Mal, but also in providing insights into Baudelaire's own character and beliefs. Eliot observes a shift in perspectives regarding Baudelaire's religious views over time, noting that while Baudelaire was once regarded as a serious Satanist, contemporary interpretations tend to see him more as a Christian figure. Eliot cautiously aligns himself with this latter view, suggesting that beneath Baudelaire's outward Satanism lies a nuanced understanding of Christianity, albeit one tinged with uncertainty and doubt. He posits that Baudelaire's exploration of Satanism was not mere rebellion, but rather an indirect engagement with Christianity, stemming from a genuine, albeit conflicted, belief. Central to Eliot's analysis is Baudelaire's dark and melancholic personality, which he views as essential to the poet's work. Elite argues against dismissing Baudelaire's flaws as inconsequential, asserting that they contribute to the depth and resonance of his art. He suggests that Baudelaire's struggles and contradictions enrich his work, imbuing it with a raw authenticity that transcends moral judgments. 
Eliot also highlights Baudelaire's unique approach to suffering, contrasting it with Dante's portrayal of hell. While Dante's hell is populated by distinct characters and punishments, Baudelaire's suffering suggests the potential for transcendence and spiritual elevation. Eliot suggests that Baudelaire's rejection of the purely natural or human points to a deeper yearning for the supernatural and the divine. Moreover, Eliot explores Baudelaire's romantic inclinations and his dissatisfaction with the mundane world, positing them as expressions of a deeper spiritual malaise. He suggests that Baudelaire's boredom and spiritual laziness stem from an unsuccessful attempt to live a more spiritually fulfilling life, leading him to seek solace in concepts of heaven and hell. Thus, Eliot's essay offers a nuanced and insightful analysis of Baudelaire's complex character and literary contributions, shedding light on the poet's exploration of faith, suffering and the human condition. Through his examination of Baudelaire's prose and poetry, Eliot invites readers to reconsider their understanding of this enigmatic figure and his enduring relevance in literary history. Eliot sheds light on both his artistic achievements and limitations. He begins by questioning the true essence and importance of Baudelaire's mind, suggesting that while his poems may exhibit technical prowess and aesthetic beauty, they may lack depth and meaningful exploration of life's complexities. He contends that Baudelaire's romantic era influences, coupled with his personal turmoil, may have hindered the deeper exploration of his emotions and thoughts in his poetry. Eliot further contrasts Baudelaire's work with that of his contemporaries, such as Théophile Gautier, noting that while Baudelaire possessed superior technical skills, his emotions often overwhelmed the structure of his poems. He critiques Baudelaire's imagery as limited and outdated, particularly his thematic focus on subjects like prostitutes, mulattoes, and corpses. Additionally, Eliot compares Baudelaire unfavorably to canonical poets like Dante and Shakespeare, suggesting that his work may lack the enduring qualities found in their writings. Despite these criticisms, Eliot acknowledges Baudelaire's significance within the context of his time period. He recognizes Baudelaire's role as a pioneering figure who challenged romantic ideals and introduced new imagery and language to poetry. Eliot argues that Baudelaire's incorporation of modern life into his poetry, along with his innovative use of language, revitalized French poetry and cemented his legacy as a seminal figure in modern poetry across languages. Eliot provides an insightful analysis of Baudelaire's sincerity, grappling with themes of sin, redemption, and the struggle between good and evil in his poetry. He argues that Baudelaire's sincerity runs deep, despite the romantic origins of some of his poems and the prevalent Satanism of his time. Baudelaire approached devilry externally. He delved into the genuine existential conflict between sin and redemption. Eliot suggests that Baudelaire's recognition of sin in the midst of political reforms and social upheavals represented a new beginning, offering a way to escape the ennui of modern life and find meaning in existence. Baudelaire's exploration of sin, according to Eliot, distinguishes him from poets like Byron and Shelley as he grapples with it in the enduring Christian sense rather than in a purely aesthetic or rebellious manner. Furthermore, Eliot discusses Baudelaire's treatment of love in his poetry, noting a longing for fulfillment beyond human relationships alone. Baudelaire's romantic longing, as depicted in poems like Le Balcon, reflects a poignant awareness of the limitations of human desires and a yearning for something transcendent. Eliot, however, acknowledges that Baudelaire falls short in harmonizing the natural with the spiritual, the human with the supernatural, when compared to Dante. Despite this, Eliot emphasizes the significance of Baudelaire's personal experiences in shaping his understanding of love and spirituality, particularly evident in his introspective writings like Journaux à Thème and Macor Mianu. Eliot delves into the French poet's provocative saying, 
The unique and supreme pleasure of love lies in the uncertainty of doing evil. He interprets this as boldly as a recognition that human love transcends mere animal instincts as it involves an awareness of moral principles of good and evil. According to Eliot, Baudelaire reviews the sexual act not as a mundane biological function, but as an acknowledgement of human existence, affirming humanity's capacity for both good and evil. He suggests that Baudelaire's willingness to confront the possibility of damnation reflects his courage and authenticity in acknowledging the darker aspects of human nature. Furthermore, Eliot explores Baudelaire's complex views on love, noting a discrepancy between his certainty in human love and his uncertainty regarding divine love. Baudelaire's criticism of women, Eliot argues, stems from his inability to reconcile his personal experiences with his idealistic desires. Eliot juxtaposes Baudelaire's perspectives with Dante's Vita Nuova and Divine Comedy, suggesting that Dante's works serve as a complement and correction to Baudelaire's views on relationships between men and women. However, Eliot asserts that Baudelaire's worldview has its own significance and grandeur, serving as a guiding principle for his era and beyond. Finally, Eliot draws parallels between Baudelaire's ideas and those of T. E. Hume, highlighting their shared emphasis on human imperfection and the importance of discipline and order in society. The essay offers a nuanced analysis of Baudelaire's complex views on love, morality, and human nature, shedding light on the enduring significance of his philosophical and poetic contributions.